Today at ShopTap.com, we're gonna show you how to diagnose and replace a wheel bearing on a Mark 7. Okay, so diagnosing a wheel bearing on a Mark 7, mostly this is going to be a noise that you're gonna have, could be play that happens in your wheel bearing. One most important note, the reason why you would not allow a wheel bearing noise or a bad wheel bearing to continue, this is what holds your wheel to the car. If this gets loose enough, which they do over time and, and can potentially have a problem where the bearing comes completely apart and your wheel goes flying off your car. So make sure you don't let a bad wheel bearing go too long because it can end up making your wheel fall off your car. With that said, let's get into diagnosis. Now, the first thing you're going to want to diagnose is going to be the noise, where it's coming from. Once you identify that, you're going to want to locate that wheel and see if you have any play. This is something that you can do by going up and down. Basically, I'm pulling forward and backward like this on this wheel to see if there's play in here. If you do it this way, you're going to potentially be getting tie rod play as opposed to wheel bearing play. So go up and down, you're going forward, backward like this. This is the motion you're looking in to see if you have play. If you have play, that means you have a very bad wheel bearing. You should immediately replace it and do not drive the car without getting it replaced, it could be a safety hazard. This car does not have play in this wheel, uh, but we are gonna show you test driving to help you identify how you would notice this through a test drive. Pretty much really requires you to test drive and then listen. So the first thing you're gonna be listening for is where the noise is coming from. Wheel bearings as a general rule are going to be a growl noise coming from the vehicle, going to be from one corner. Now, the way you determine if a wheel bearing is bad or to diagnose it, you can get under the vehicle, which we're gonna show you in a second, or you can test drive it. Uh, we're gonna show you test driving it now, and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna load and unload the wheel bearings on each side to see if the noise changes in pitch. That will help us determine that we have a bad wheel bearing. So what we're gonna do is unload it on one side or the other. I don't know how great this is gonna come across in a video as far as the audio of the noise, but the, the noise should change as you're shifting the weight of the vehicle on and off that wheel. So as you saw there, what you should expect to see is it change pitch as you load and unload the vehicle. Also, wheel bearing noise will always change with the speed of the car. So it will be kind of lower and slower as you go and then get higher as you drive. So as we slow down, we should be able to hear that. So we are under our car and we have the vehicle running on the lift. You would do this on jack stands. Of course, you always wanna be careful whenever you're running a car on jack stands or a lift to make sure it's properly secured so you don't fall off and get run over. Whenever you're going to diagnose a wheel bearing, something you can use is either a long screwdriver like this one or a stethoscope like this one for automotive noise. What you're gonna be doing is listening for the difference between one side versus the other we should be able to hear a difference if you have a bad wheel bearing, which we know this side is bad. We should be able to listen to the passenger side, compare it to the driver's side, and see uh, a variance between the way they sound. So to listen to this, you may want to actually drive the car on a lift and get it going at a higher rate of speed to get the noise to produce. Now, in our case, we're not really able to produce the noise at this low of a speed, but what I'm using is I'm, I'm putting this stethoscope on the bolts for the wheel bearing housing and then the steering knuckle itself. Really anywhere on that's metal to metal should be able to get some uh, resonance through it. So our eyes seem to notice the most noise is this divot in the back of the wheel bearing housing as you can see that I'm in right here. And this is where I notice the most difference between the two. We're gonna start by taking our wheels off. 17 millimeter. <clears throat> Now we are going to start by taking off this axle bolt. It's a 24 millimeter 12 point bolt. This is something we're gonna be using an electric impact to get off, but since you probably don't own one, I'm gonna show you how you're gonna use, I would suggest putting a wheel bolt in here to make sure you get this rotor clamp down, put a screwdriver in here, and then you can put a 24 millimeter on a breaker bar and allow this thing to break loose. Now we have different brakes than your car uh, for sure because these are TTS brakes. We have upgraded these. If you wanna take a look at the specifics of how your brakes would come apart on a GTI or pretty much most Mark 7s, we do have a front brake DIY, which we will link to in the description where you can check that out. Also, the wheel bearings for this vehicle will be linked in the description below. And again, support for purchases like this or any others help support videos just like this one.
Now these two carrier bolts that hold on this caliper, because this is a fixed, we don't you have a two piece setup like you would have, uh, but they're 21 millimeters and we're gonna break these loose. We're about to take this 21 millimeter bolt out and you do wanna make sure you have bungee cords like this hanging. We have it wrapped around our, uh, through our spring and shock assembly there because you wanna hang this caliper so you don't break your brake lines uh, because we are gonna have to have this swung out of the way for this. And then hang this baby over here. Now we're gonna take off our brake rotor set screw to remove our brake rotor. This is a T30 Torx and these are gonna be potentially problematic if you are in an area where there is a lot of corrosion. You're not gonna get them to come off quite like that and ours just drop, pops off no problem because we don't have a lot of corrosion in the south. Yours you're gonna need possibly to hit it with a hammer, PB blast it to make sure you get some penetrating oil on it beforehand or something of that nature. Uh, before you try to break it loose. There's also something called an impact driver that you can use for that. Now we're gonna take off these nuts. These are 16 millimeters that hold the ball joint to the control arm. Uh, we do have upgraded control arms, which we have a video on that if you wanna check that out. Now we're gonna separate this and you just wanna wanna pull, maybe hit it, hit it with a screwdriver a little bit to get this down. You are gonna have to pull it down evenly so it makes sure it slides down these studs an even rate. There we go. There we go. And now we can pull this guy out like that. Now, the last thing we need to do to access the wheel bearing is get the axle that's splined into this hub out. So it needs to be pushed through. Now, you can use a punch and a hammer or a screwdriver and a hammer to try to break it loose. Ours shouldn't be too bad because this car has been a part a bajillion times. Uh, we have done quite a few things. If you're not familiar with this car, we have a series where we uh, raced it, rallied it, and did all kinds of nonsense with it. So uh, feel free to check that out. So we're gonna try to get this thing spined uh, out of here. You also, something to be aware of, may consider running a bolt in there, getting it threaded down most of the way, not all the way, and then just and give it a couple whacks with a hammer or potentially maybe even just push to see if you can get it out. There technically would be a special tool that you would use from VW and Audi for this, uh, but that's not something that pretty much anyone's gonna have for doing this job. One note about this, I'm gonna pop this with a hammer. If you have to do this too much, you could damage the threads of your axle. You will regret that. So uh, I'm just using this to kind of pop this thing loose. It shouldn't be too difficult on our car. If you're in the north and you have to, I would potentially soak the thing for a while and again, use something like a chisel or uh, a punch and maybe you can put a socket on an extension and hammer the back of that. That way you can get a, a perfectly round uh, contact portion with the actual hub of the axle itself. Yeah, see that went in, no problem. I'm just doing a little prying on here to get this thing loosened up a little bit for us. Into the car, there we go. So as you saw there, I just pulled a little bit extra on that hub to give a little extra yank. And we'll just slide this guy out of the way and hopefully we can get a shot of this thing. Now, because we have a bad CV boot on our car, we are gonna be removing our axle to replace it. You are not going to need to do that, but for the use of this video, it won't be in our way kind of hanging around, uh, which will make it slightly easier for us to show you on camera. It's not really gonna be in your way in terms of the DIY, because there's only three more bolts that hold this thing on and then we're about to come out. Now, if you take a look here, we're about to break these bolts loose. We have one, two, three of them. They're 10 millimeter triple squares. If you don't have one, you will need one. Uh, we'll link to a triple square set in the description. I have inserted one of the studs of the ball joint back into the control arm here, and this is so that it doesn't move on us while we're trying to break this loose. Uh, if you don't have that, this thing will, thing will be swinging around and flapping around like a bapkin on you. Um, so we're gonna put our 10 millimeter and triple, uh, triple square in and break that loose. Now we got our bolts out and we should be able to just wiggle this out like so. When you do this, you are gonna to wanna to get a wire brush of some kind and clean this surface up. I, we have a bunch of dirt caked in ours because we rallied this car and it could be the source of some of the premature failure of our wheel bearing. Now this hole right here, 
I assume this is an inspection hole that may be for exactly what we were trying to do earlier. This is the best place that I could was, was able to put a stethoscope to hear the noise was from the back side on the bottom here. I thought it was just kind of a divot. It was actually the back of the wheel bearing. So that's where you're gonna to wanna to make sure you actually put a stethoscope or a screwdriver in there to be able to hear the vibration because you're gonna actually hear noise from this because you're touching directly onto the wheel bearing. Neato. So we can see here very slightly, I can actually feel it in the wheel bearing when I, when I move it, but we're using a screwdriver here to kind of move it back and forth. You can see right there, the play that we had in our wheel bearing. Now that our hub's all cleaned up, we are going to install our wheel bearing. It should just sit in there like that. And then we're gonna thread the bolts in from the back. And we're gonna include the torque specs for these on screen so you can tighten them up when you're done. We're now gonna reinstall everything just like we came apart. One thing you do wanna note is the axle bolt on the outer is supposed to be replaced as well as the inner axle bolts. We will include the torque spec for the outer axle bolt as well as the inner axle bolt and the ball joints. And again, uh, you, we will show the tightening procedure for this axle bolt, uh, which you're gonna wanna kind of thread in there and then do on the ground. So now that we've gotten everything on, we've reinstalled our wheel. We do wanna show you the wheel torque spec. You do wanna leave your center cap out of your wheel and then you can either have a friend hold the brakes while you torque this thing down or, uh, or you can probably try to put your e-brake on. I don't know if it's gonna hold, but better to have somebody hold the brakes and then you're gonna do so. We have our torque spec that we'll give you and it's going to depend on your uh, on the bolt that you have. So there's a washered version that has an actual washer on the bolt or the washer is kind of built into the bolt and that depends on yours and we'll show you on screen right now. And I'm torque this thing. Now that we have our wheel bearing installed, let's go take this thing for a test drive and make sure it fixed it. 